<laughs> I'm uh, Skip Skyrood. I'm a member of the museum here. I'm a member of Eclampus Vitus. And uh, Tom and I bounce history off each other. Uh, he's my spell checker. So, uh, what we're talking about today is dedicated historic sites in Mariposa County. And I'm excluding Yosemite because they've dedicated every bridge and tree up there for something for the black. So, we're going to start now with uh, Mariposa County and which slide, or which were done first. Tom, uh, we're going to go around the county and you'll see these signs, point of historical interest. Those are put up by Caltrans to point you to something. Uh, in the case of Hornitos, it doesn't point you to anything because there's no marker out there other than a wooden sign. It doesn't give you more information. Okay, Tom. Yes, sir. The U.S. Department of uh, Interior has a National Register of Historic Places. They have 38 places on the register, and these are the only ones that are not within the park. It's interesting, uh, Mariposa County High School Auditorium. Yeah. A lot of people don't know that's a historical registered with the Department of Interior. It was built in uh, 1935 as a WPA project. It opened in 1936, and it's on the register because of its architectural style. And of course, uh, St. Joseph's Church and the Rectory, that whole complex is on the registry. The courthouse is probably the most plaque facility or site we have in the county. Uh, the state has plaqued it, the Native Sons of the Golden West, the Feds, the Clampers, just about anybody that has a plaque puts it up there. Okay, uh, on the left you'll see the National Register of Historic Places. That's the generic sign that the Department of Interior sends you when you get plaqued. On the right, the Masonic Hall in Hornitos, they opted to not take the generic plaque. And they have included some more history of the Masonic Hall number 98. And that was uh, 2005. And at the very bottom, it has a uh, national register number. Now, who can tell me where this monument's at? <laughs> You've all been by it. Mariposa County. County. You've all been by it. And when you went by it, you weren't looking for that monument. You were looking at your speedometer. <clears throat> now, that should be a clue. Okay. Not close. <laughs> okay, Thomas. Uh, William Cell Bridge. It's in the turnout there. William Cell Bridge. This is not a historic site, but I included this because it was the first place award winner in 1972 for bridge design. So, next time you're there uh, and you're not looking at your speedometer, pull off. You can't see the plaque because it's not only been shot up, but it's been stolen. Uh, brass plaques have scrap value. You know, people are stealing cemetery headstones for whatever reason. So uh, that plaque's not there, but that's, that's historical, because you've seen a plaque, that you've driven by it, never seen a monument. Now the uh, the state of California has a register of historical landmarks, and these are all the ones that are done in Mariposa County. 1939, they did uh, Mormon Bar, Bear Valley, Coulterville, Hornitas, and then I'm going to have to look at my little crib sheet here and tell you when they did the rest. Uh, Agua Fria was done in uh, 1954, Savage Trading Post up on the Merced River, 1955, 
Mariposa County Courthouse was registered as a historical landmark by the state of California in 1958. And 1968, Yosemite Valley, the whole valley, they just made it historic. Okay, Tom? You'll see these signs along the road. The Bear Valley one is in Bear Valley, obviously. And the Coulter one, Coulterville one is as you come into Coulterville, right up the, just across the bridge there. The difference is one says there's a marker 500 feet ahead, and the other one doesn't say anything because the state doesn't always put up a marker. There's only three markers of the eight that the state has recognized as registered historic sites that have a marker. And Tom, if you'll show us the next marker. One of them is the uh, courthouse. And just below that brass plaque at the courthouse is where the National Register plaque is for the uh, Department of Interior. On the right is the oxidized Coulterville one. And it's interesting, the courthouse is number 331. Coulterville is 332, so they kind of went down the road. Uh, I will show you one other one that the state participated in creating the plaque, but that will be further down the road. Native Sons of the Golden West, building no longer exists. It was next to Stag Hall in Hornitas. At one time, that was a Wells Fargo office, and between the doors was a plaque. And the building is gone, but the plaque remains. As you're going into Stag Hall, up the handicap ramp, you'll see a monument. And there's the plaque. And that was put up by the Native Sons of the Golden West Yosemite Parlor, number 24. And does anybody here know anybody that's a member of the Native Sons of the Golden West? Uh, I'm eligible, but I don't know anyone. Dave? They're deceased. They're, yeah, they're up in a cemetery someplace. Okay. This one here is kind of special today. Today is April 21st. This was dedicated April 21st, 1929, 84 years ago. The Native Sons of the Golden West had a big celebration up at our courthouse and dedicated that plaque. And you may recall there was a quartz rock on top. You know, if they'll steal a brass one from William Sell, they're going to steal quartz. It's a shame that people have such a disregard for history. Okay. I have a picture of about 20 of those members out in front of the old house. The, ju the judge and the three brothers, all the four brothers are out there. Mm -hmm. I don't know how they wound up out in their valley for the photo. But, but they, they uh, Forrest Palmer, he's not yeah, yeah, yeah. a yeah. Okay, but that's. Uh, That's really interesting. There it is, April 21st, 1929. The courthouse. So, if you're 84 years old or older, you may have been there. <laughs> Looking in this room, were you there? I don't know anybody that was. Okay, Tom? The Native Daughters of the Golden West. Mariposa Parlor, number 63, I understand they have about seven members left. They dedicated historic sites. This was uh, Agua Fria. It's on Highway 140 and Yankee Gulch. That's, Tom keeps correcting me on that. Uh, Tom? That's a uh, registered landmark by the State Park Commission 518. That's one that the state waited until another organization came up with some money. Then they said, oh, okay, we'll participate in the flag. So that's right next to uh, another Agua Fria flag. 
the clampers put up. Neither of these plaques are at the site where Agua Fria was. And the reason we put plaques where we do is you want some visibility to the public. I mean, there are some plaques we have in Tuolumne County that you have to have four-wheel drive in a national forest map to find them. Uh, to dedicate a plaque up there, it's kind of difficult to have somebody find it. What we'll sometimes say is nearby or located within a mile of here was the town site of. So, okay. The Golden West in 1966 also dedicated the Odd Fellows Hall in downtown Mariposa. There are people that have gone by that sign and never paid attention to it. It's located on the side of the building. Uh, there's the aluminum bench there. If you look, you'll see that sign, but it's been there since 1966. And there are people that have lived in this town since 1966 that have never seen it. They just walk by it because they're going someplace else. St. <laughs> Catherine's Ornitas. Ornitas. That was plaque by the Native Daughters of the Golden West. 1988. Still there. It's, as you go up to the church, Look down to the right, it's almost on the ground. So the native sons and the daughters of the Golden West years ago were very active in, in this community and recognizing historic sites. And it's a shame that they're just kind of fading away. Kathy's Valley Historical Society. This is another one you've driven by. Obviously, coming back from Costco. <laughs> People see that, you should stop and read it. There's a lot of history in there. People drive by it, and I'm sure there are people that have driven by it many, many times, have never stopped and looked at the back. Whenever you look at a monument, don't just look at the front. Go around the back and, and see what else is there. And this uh, is a little niche that lists families from Kathy's Valley that aren't included in the front. The Chamber of Commerce in uh, 1930 there was an article in the Mariposa Gazette. And it said, 50 historic signs from Mariposa County. Beautifully colored signs which will be used to mark the principal historic sites of Mariposa County have been received by the Chamber of Commerce. And it goes on, uh, this work is one of the best pieces of work that's been done by the Chamber of Commerce. This is one that was out in uh, Hornitas. The only one that I know that is still surviving is also in Hornios. <clears throat> okay, and a close-up of that. So that was back in the 30s, the chamber was in there. And there's one in here. There's one in here. Yeah, for the Galliardo store. Yeah, but out on the street, surviving time, either stolen or whatever, and, and I don't think there's anybody in the chamber now that's actively doing any recognition of historic sites within the county. Okay. There are several of these, and this is what I want, want somebody here to tell me. Uh, Leroy Radonovich can't tell me. Sarah Williams, the planning director, can't tell me. And Tom Phillips can't tell me. Who put these up? They're all over the county. The courthouse, just roll through these, Tom. Coulterville. Fair Valley. Hornitas. 
say? Not an effort. Mm -hmm. Oh. I have no record of it. Agafria? Yeah. This one, uh, at the bottom, it has two initials and 90. We don't know if that was in 1990 they <clears throat> repaired it or something or changed the words. But I'd sure like to know. Um, yeah, sure putting them up no, no, I'll, I'll to it. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, as you can see, the Hornito sign now is leaning against the wall at Stag Hall in Hornitos. It'll just rot away and sold the other ones unless something is done to either replace them or protect them. And this one in Hornitos has been replaced by And I'm not sure who put this up. I would probably suspect it's the patrons of Hornitos. Patrons Club. Patrons Club. And not to be confused with the flea market patrons club and t-shirt sellers. <laughs> There's <coughs> Hornitos School Patrons Club. This is on the same side, uh, the opposite side of Stag Hall from where the Native Sons building was. And it's a, uh, just commemorating a tribute to uh, two ladies, Gagliardo and Rogers, in appreciation for a lifetime of dedication to the community and service, goodwill, Hornitos School Patrons Club. I think that's a very nice thing. and. And take a look at the next one. Uh, this is a Ghirardelli chocolate store. Uh, Mr. Ghirardelli was born in Italy, went to Uruguay. He'd been in a chocolate business before he came to uh, Hornitos. But something, neither one of these plaques have a date on them by who put them and when did they do it? And when you look back in history, you see something along the road and you want to go, who do I talk to about finding more, you know? Where do I go to the newspaper? What year was that put up? Sometimes you'll find in the Gazette, if you got a date, you can go back and find some history on when something happened. But with no date, you're dateless. This is one in Coulterville. You may, never, may not have noticed it, it's right there at the corner of 49 Main, and that is the uh, Jeffrey Hotel behind it, some of the, the trees there. And that was dedicated to memory of the pioneers of Coulterville who founded this mining town in 1850, erected by the members of Pioneer Families, February 1942. And on the back side of that, there's a, another plaque saying who the Two gentlemen were the children. The odd fellow saw. You saw the plaque on the side. There's another plaque in the front. It's, it just recognizes the building. It recognizes that it was chartered in 1855, Mariposa Lodge 39. The building was dedicated in 68, 1868, and the Rebecca's were chartered in 1921. So if you're if you're at the Fremont House looking at the shoe sale, just look up and there's that plaque. <clears throat> so. Now Rotary has started a program. They are uh, recognizing buildings of historic significance in the town planning area. This one, the Patton House, is in front of the Charles Street dinner house. You'll notice they're, they're on a brass on a slate background, and they're becoming more visible around town. And it says, uh, who, who dedicated it? But once again, there's no date on when it was dedicated. But Rotary is, is doing, uh, 
I don't know if it's just Rotary members' buildings or Tom. Have they talked to you about? Yes. Their they're doing it. Actually, they're trying to get the business owners to actually pay for the plaque. Yeah. Uh, okay. And, and they and they help them with the history. Yeah. It's okay. Uh, then there is the Fremont Adobe. This sign is in front of the gold coin. When an individual puts up a plaque, or any organization puts up a plaque, you got to read it and say, is this all believable? Did this really happen? Well, this is one that really sticks in some people's craw. Because there are some inconsistencies in there. And one of them uh, is the very bottom line. It refers to the Gordon Hotel. The Gordon Hotel was not in that building. Tom has given presentations here showing that the Gordon Hotel was located behind this building. It was a standalone building. They may have had a saloon in there, but they didn't have a hotel. Some folks say it was a three-story adobe building. Well, you look at it from the front, it's one story. You go around the back, you can see more stories, but architects, planners, a story is the first floor, the second floor, third floor, Anything below the first floor is a basement, not considered a story. And that is not a three-story adobe building. And Tom, there's one more. The Stahl brothers he talked about. Oh, sorry. That's okay. Hmm. Anyway, the Stahl brothers. The building has also been used as Small Brothers Thompson. But here, the owner, Louis Felbush, rebuilt the damage. That was not decided, the owner rebuilt it. And it wasn't the re owner that rebuilt it, it was the Stahl Brothers, if, if you believe Tom and all his stuff. And one thing, when Tom tells you something or tells me something, don't question him, because if you question him, He's going to show you so many newspaper articles, so many books, so many pictures. It's just, if Tom says it, just say, okay, I'll go along with you, Tom. I disagree. <laughs> yeah. You question everybody. About everything. Yeah. Okay, question Tom. Okay, e clapis vitis. Quido uh, quia absurdum, that's our, our motto. Basically, it means if it's absurd, we believe it. So, we're kind of a, a fun loving fraternal organization that wants to preserve California history. And now uh, we've gone nationwide, so it's not just California history. There's chapters in Arizona, New Mexico that are preserving local history there. In fact, just a little aside, I don't know if you watch Pawn Stars. Mark Patton, the guy that comes in from the museum that always wears a hat and a red shirt, he's the one they question on history stuff. He's an ex-humbug from the chapter down there. And I had the opportunity to meet him uh, last May in Sonora at a Clamper event. And I just told him, I said, Mark, I said, how do you know all this stuff? You know, they pick up the phone and, and you just and not tell him. He says, I've got weeks in advance. He says, they give me a subject and I got to research it. And I'll have weeks before I go down there and walk in and they're the know it all. What's a humbug? A humbug is uh, if you were an elk, you'd be an exalted ruler. Uh, if you were uh, in the chamber, you'd probably be the president. The humbug is the clampers. Head honcho. Head honcho. He's, he's the man that gets the, the name humbug. And uh, it's really, you work your way through the chairs and you eventually end up as humbug and you have no authority. You just look good at the top hat. Okay.
So, the Matuka chapter, to which I belong, and Dave and Ron, some other folks here, the Matuka chapter was uh, chartered in September 1948 for a 501c3. C, excuse me, c7. 501c3 is anything you give those folks is tax deductible. A 501c7. Well, like the History Center is a 501c3, so give it to the History Center is tax deductible. Give it to me and the Clampers, even though we're a nonprofit, it's not tax deductible. So, Tom has always got a, a pitch. Get <laughs> seasick. Okay. Matuka, Mariposa, Tuolumne, and Calaveras County. Uh, Clampers aren't that bright. They, they, they had to keep it simple, something they would all know. Uh, our number is 1849. 1849, a gold rush. There's a chapter in Downeyville, 1849. Quita, Quita absurd. Who cares? Eastern Madera County has Grub Gulch, 4149. Huh. Two highways connect, Highway 41 and 49. <laughs> the Bodie chapter over in Eastside was sponsored by uh, the Matuka chapter. Their chapter 64 because that's the year they were started. So that's our chapter. Uh, we dedicate a historic site in each of the counties every year. So we're putting up three plaques a year. This is the most recent one. Elliott Corner was done on the 6th. And uh, to help pay for plaques. One thing about the clampers, there's no dues. And I guess you can't quit. <laughs> but they sell you t-shirts <laughs> and they sell you barbecue dinner and they sell pins so all the money that for the plaques and the monuments we do is just generated by ourselves. we don't take donations except uh, the landowner will donate the land now this is uh, what we did Elliot Corner was just up the road about 100 yards from where this monument is. This monument is on Tarsilla Mountain Road, just as you turn off on Highway, off highway 49. Mm -hmm. Elliott Corner was the Elliott Ranch, Charles Elliott. And there was two ways to go to Wawona before the Highway 49 went through. And people would stop, and they'd say, uh, which way is the best to go? And they'd say, well, you can go this way. It's 14 miles up, but it's pretty arduous. Or you can go this way. It's 24. We'll take you through Cedarbrook Lodge and take you through Miami Lodge. You both end up in Wawona. Well, Bill Elliott, 96 years old, was very, very helpful in getting the words on this. Tom introduced me to him. And he had some stories, like his dad would say, people coming down the short way, the 14 miles, they would tie logs behind their cars to slow them down because the brakes would fail. So when they got down to the Elliott Ranch, they'd say, can we leave these logs here? So he was getting firewood. <laughs> Going the other way, if he sent people the other way, they would stop at Miami Lodge for a meal or maybe spend the night. Miami Lodge owner kept the Elliott family in ice during the summer. He had an ice house. So the Elliots really won no matter which way you went. If you went, if you went Miami, they're gonna keep you in ice and if they come back the other way, you're gonna get firewood. But I told you, always look at the back of a monument. Because we incorporated the rest of that wheel there. Uh, we put other little things on the back of a monument. This one happened to have a 1939 beer can opener. 
beer bottle opener. And when Bill Elliott, this was at 9 o'clock in the morning, 96-year-old guy walks around to look at the back of the plaque and he goes, hey, who's got the beer? <laughs> <laughs> and he's not a clapper. <laughs> okay. Historic walls. Uh, this is in Coulterville. Coulterville was devastated by fires every 10 years for three decades. And uh, the only thing standing from some of the original fires are those two walls. You can, uh, you can see here there's one building here and one building there and the walls are different. But we just dedicated the remaining walls of the town. Then, this is Eleanor Trabuco. Dave Trabuco is right here. He's, he's the one that said, hey, let's put a plaque on the building right there. <laughs> Gave us a lot of history. Very generous. Uh, and it's a tribute to Mrs. Eleanor Trabuco. Where's that? It's in Bear Valley at Dave Trabuco's house. <laughs> Dave, how are you related to Eleanor? My great grandmother. Great grandmother. And Michael's great great grandmother. Michael's great great grandmother. Okay. And you can see uh, at a dedication, it's always about 9.01 in the morning. You know, we don't have exactly 9, 9.01, 9.02. You get a lot, of, a lot of public, a lot of people in red shirts there for the unveiling. That was in 2011. I'm taking you back now in Clamper time. Tower Rock. The old maps, Tower Rock. On the uh, Lost Mariposa grants by Fremont, it's Tower Rock. It wasn't until later that they started having May Day parties, it just became May Rock. It's kind of like uh, out at the fairgrounds, I think one of the buildings is a Sequoia and the other is a Redwood. Well, they're still going to be building A and building B. And that's why May Rock is May Rock. Uh, the Bonshu family uh, got this. Uh, we, Got this piece of May rock. We brought it from back there. What kind of rock is it? Granite. What? Of course. You said granite. Okay, but if you take everything geology, <laughs> it's quartz. And how much gold is in there, Tom? There's no gold in there. Why? Because if there was gold in there, it wouldn't be there. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what happens. <laughs> you, can, you can go up and see some uh, where they bored in there and they found no gold. Okay. The next is the view of uh, May Rock that the average person doesn't get to see. That's an aerial photograph. And uh, we all paid for it. Because Dave Silva, who works for PG&E, was flying power lines in a helicopter, surveying the lines. Uh, but it was a power outage. And he happened to take this picture of May Rock and give it to me. So if you see Dave, you know Dave, thank you for that picture because that's the only aerial that I know of, of May Rock. Then uh, just north of Coulterville, we did the uh, town site of Pina Blanco and the Hague Ranch. Alan Hague. Uh, this is just off the right of way. You don't want to deal with the state of California Caltrans and get permission to put a monument in the right of way. You can if it's historical, but what you need is a resolution from the state assembly saying that this is a historic site and it's worthy of a plaque, a monument. So we will, like we did Elliot Corner, it's just out of the right away around the corner. This is coming out of Coulterville, Hague Ranch Road, turn right, it's right there, out of the right away, no Caltrans problems. Whitlock.
Block Mining District. This is up in front of the uh, Mountain View grocery store in Mid Pines. Uh, when I was researching this, I was looking for where are the, the maps that show what district is what. There's, there's the Whitlock Mining District, there's the Washington Mining District. Where can I find this? Went to Tom, looked through a lot of books. To my knowledge, there are no maps, like a county map or city map. There are no district maps for mining districts in the state of California. It's kind of like, oh, yeah, that mine's over by the Dilts mine. That's over by uh, the town of Whitlock. So it's in the Whitlock mining district, it's just the neighborhood. And once again, that is set back about two feet from the uh, county right away, right in front of the uh, Midline store. Now this is one that you all walked by when you came in here. And it's kind of interesting who you have to get permission from. Well, the dirt that that monument is on belongs to the county. The tenant is the museum. So what you do is you come up with your proposal that you want to dedicate something. And you go to uh, the museum board. And you've got a committee of people there that want to wordsmith it and give input. And then you have to go to the Mariposa County Historical Sites and Record Preservation Commission. And you have to give a pitch to them. And they want to change it. And they, they have a vote. And then, when you jump through those hoops, you get to go before the Board of Supervisors and say, we've been to the museum, we've been to historic sites, now we want you to uh, approve this. And when that happened, there was a supervisor on there that wanted to change it. And we were to the point of, maybe we don't want to do this kind of stuff, you know? We, we don't want to get involved with government. But okay, this is the one that we did in front, and I'm going to show you a little history of how we build these. We start day one, we pour a uh, foundation, cement foundation, and then we have some time to kill, because we want that to uh, set and harden, so we can start putting these cinder block base for our monument. So if, if you've ever seen a clamper just kind of stand around doing nothing but maybe drinking beer, he's waiting for the concrete to set. <laughs> How many supervisors are up there? Oh, uh, you can see, uh, <coughs> well, we, we've got uh, handicapped parking. Uh, Retired firefighter. Uh, this is our monument erectus. That's the title. We have titles. That's Ronnie Wells. He's our monument erectus. He's in charge. He's the boss. What he says goes. Uh, you'll see. Uh, ooh, I, I think I do spot a beer. But that's day one. Okay. I don't know if you noticed when you came in, uh, thanks, to a, thanks to Dick Hutchinson, he was generous enough to give us typeface, type fonts, from the Gazette building. Even though it's museum property, he's just loaned it to us because it's never left the property. Uh, those are all individual pieces of type. And to put them together, you can't solder them because they're lead. You can't weld them. So we had a bracket made by uh, Shell Wall, who said, oh, I can do it. We said, knock yourself out. And he did it. So that's, as you come up, look at the monument. It's on the upper left on the side. That's kind of like a beer can opener. The type, there's always some little hidden thing. Okay? Some things are too big to be inconspicuous, but 
we went over to uh, there to the pile of stamps and cans and said, well, we'd like to borrow something. And so we borrowed a cam and it ended up in the lower left hand corner. So it's something unique from this site. Okay. Now, what just dropped in there is a time capsule. It's a piece of uh, black ABS pipe and we include a time capsule in every monument. Uh, at the Tribuco store, we didn't have a monument, so we took a uh, computer disk and put all the information on a disk and put it behind the, the plaque. So, what's in a time capsule? You've seen this. This is the uh, program for the Centennial uh, Mariposa Gazette. We always put the latest edition of the Mariposa Gazette because somebody can open up and say, they were selling bacon, you know, or tomatoes. You could buy them when they were round like that. They didn't come in a powdered form or something. You know, whatever gas receipts we put in. Uh, the glass ceiling sharpshooter was uh, an invasive, invasive uh, insect at this time. Uh, I had a part-time job working for the county, so I got one of these invasive glassy wing sharpshooters in a vial of alcohol and the brochure it included there. Uh, we have, that's Pelk Richards' uh, baseball card that the sheriff's had, uh, drink chip from the airport in, beer opener, beer opener Skyward for City Council. <laughs> That's my past life. Uh, this is Cousin Jack's store. Um, the octagon souvenir that they had for the beer opener. That's a different story. For bubble. Okay, so that, that's what we put it. We roll all that stuff up, put it in here. Some guys will uh, write a personal check for a million dollars and just put cash. Yeah. <laughs> Carol won't let me do that. <clears throat> okay, our dedication, you know Bob Bonchu. The gentleman in the top hat is uh, our humbug. Uh, Steve Slotiger, behind him in full beard is Museum Director, Past President Ron Loya, he's a clamper. And you'll see a couple ladies up on the stage in the left there. One of them's very happy, and she's in the back of the room right now. <laughs> and Janet Bibby is the supervisor. I told you how we went through all the hoops to get this approved. When I first started the process, I saw Janet Bibby over at the post office and said, I've been talking to some folks at the museum we want to put a monument out there to celebrate their 50th anniversary. But it's in your district. Because one side was Janet Bibby, the other side was Diane Fritz. And Janet being old school, she says, oh great, just go ahead and do it. Little did she even know the hoops we had to jump through. And you can see there's the, uh, the audience. Some, uh, some of the ladies dress in period costumes, some of them uh, dress in regular clothes, and some people wear red shirts, and some people wear plaid shirts. All our dedications are always open to the public. And then we have the unveiling. Okay. Does anybody know who these two people are? Well, here's a clue, right there. That's Tom Coakley. Tom Coakley was the only humbug from Mariposa County ever since 1948. He was in 1960. And he was a judge from about 58 to 64. So that's Tom Coakley. And he was a big history buff. And because of that, there's a lot of things in this building that he acquired. So the museum has been very fortunate 
having Tom Copley as a benefactor. I don't know who would be his son, but uh, that's Judge Copley. Uh, for the 50th anniversary of the museum, uh, Dick Hutchinson, back in the Gazette office, set his type, uh, thanking us for our participation, participation, use an 1898 press. So uh, the Clampers were very, very proud to be part of the 50th anniversary of this museum. Bagby. Everybody knows there used to be a town out there, there used to be Benton Mills, there used to be a lot of activities. MID, that's the dam. The town is flooded, the ruins are flooded some of the time. The Yosemite Railroad went through there and it ceased operation in the 40s, but there was no marker. The Clampers decided, we got to mark, mark Bagby. That's MID property, Merced Irrigation District. All that means is you have to go down to a board of directors meeting for Merced Irrigation District and say, we'd like to put a plaque. Well, fortunately, we'd done some groundwork, and the assistant general manager had a PowerPoint presentation. Jerry Prager and I sat in the audience. He said, the Clampers want to do this, yada, yada, yada. Any questions to the board? And one guy goes, yeah, I got a ranch that's about 100 years old. How do I get a plaque? <laughs> so that was a unanimous vote there. And of course, there's always an attorney involved. <laughs> MID has their counsel up on the dais. And he says, whoa, whoa. You know when they come in to build this monument, they're going to have to pay a day use fee. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, the vice president, our vice, assistant general manager, oh, they will. He says, and when they dedicate it, how are we going to collect the money from all the people? <laughs> and once again, the assistant general manager said, we'll take care of that. And you know that if you pull into Bagby and park and get out of your vehicle, I want to go read that. The, count, the council for MID wants you to pay a day fee. <laughs> but don't. You'd be the first one to do it. <laughs> okay. La Mineta, Princeton, Mount Bullion. Uh, it was originally a Mexican mining camp, La Mineta. Then it became Princeton with the Princeton Mine. And then Mount Bullion. This one here has a flagpole built into it, part of the monument. It's got wiring for a spotlight, it's got a flag. This is right by the airport in, across from the airport. Now, this is a piece of Mariposa. What we uh, did is we got a boulder of Mariposa from the Mariposa quarry, just about two miles across the Tuolumne County line. George Mallory had the, the uh, quarry. He said, come up, you can do that. Uh, Sam Spaulding, who just passed away, who did the monuments in town. Uh, we took this boulder to Knowles, to the quarry there, and they sliced it. So we ended up with two pieces of Mariposite, and they looked the same. And that's one of the slices. And we'll, I'll show you the other one later. There's later. Uh, I guess you could say clampers recycle, reuse, repurpose. Uh, there's a misspelled word on there. <laughs> How many of you can spell sesquicentennial? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's hard to say, but anyway. Uh, sesquicentennial has an extra N in it. There are some people in the county that wanted us to go do this over. 
How, how hard would it be to take that N out? Yeah. Well, uh, Sam had a couple small gold nuggets he punched in there. The N can't come out, but those two little nuggets are gone. Oh, anyway, uh, and aside, the Liberty Bell that we've all seen there in Philadelphia, around the, the base of the room, Liberty Bell has Pennsylvania and Philadelphia. And Pennsylvania on the Liberty Bell is misspelled. Hmm. Check it out. Look at a photograph. Hmm. Pennsylvania has one end. Hmm. That end is in our courthouse. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Mormon Bar. Another nice thing about living in Mariposa, we had to get permission because it's on county fairgrounds property, state property, but the fair board has control over it. It was walk in and they go, hey, that's going to be a nice monument, thanks. You know, that would never happen in San Jose or Long Beach, anyplace else. You walk into a board and they, you know, you don't want to stay for the whole meeting, do you? No. <laughs> Move approval. They had one, one request. I don't know if you know where this monument is, but it's on Fairgrounds. You know where the mailboxes are? As you come up, Fairgrounds Road. They said, place it far enough back so that the mail carrier's Jeep can drive behind and open those mailboxes. So that's all the technical advice we have on that one. Northern, uh, Northern Mariposa County History Center, Coulterville. Uh, we always want to have somebody from the property, you know, around there to ask questions like, where exactly do you want it? And they go, over there is okay. There's no underground wires, there's no underground plumbing. No, no, anywhere in here. First shovel broke a piece of sprinkler system. You've got a fountain now going up straight in the air. And remember, you're in Coulterville. And it's 8 o'clock on a Saturday morning, and everybody's looking like, anybody got any PVC with them? You know, we got to fix this. Uh, fortunately, Jerry Brogger was there, and he says, Greeley Hill, true value. I'll be right back. So being a local person when you're building a monument sometimes helps. So that's the uh, Coulterville Hotel. Kathy's Valley School. Kathy's Valley School was uh, not in its present location. It was moved to the county park. And like I said, I always go around and look at the back of a monument and try to do something unique. When that was moved, part of the old foundation was in a rubble pile behind the school. And I found WPA 1936. That school was built by the WPA in 1936. And it, it was moved. And the foundation, those two bricks somehow just followed it along. And a clapper found them. We incorporated in the back. So once again, I always go look at the back of the monument. Agua Fria, first county seat. Nothing there. Do you put it? Do you put a, a plaque on a, a road that has 15 cars a day? You know, and it's seven going one way and eight going the other way, and probably six of them are the same car. <laughs> so we put this right next to the Native Daughters of the Golden West on Yaki Gulch and 140. But right here, you see these rocks? We went down and got those out of Agua Fria Creek on the town site. So we did a little simulation of Agua Fria Creek around there to the back of the monument.
Hazel Green. Hazel Green is 40 acres of uh, privately owned property uh, adjacent to the park, up off 120. There was a lot of discussion at one time. Uh, the property owner wanted to build a conference center, and that was back in 2000? No, 99. And that, that plaque, which we had built, had it all etched, had all the history done, was going to be incorporated into the conference center. And then you may recall, over the past years, there's been very heated discussion and attorneys involved again, because they wanted to open up the old road from Coulterville that would go into the park through Hazel Green. Hazel Green was a stopping place. It was hazel, hazelnut trees and green meadows. That's why it was called Hazel Green. There was no lady named Hazel Green. Uh, there was just a stage stop. And that, that plaque is now held by uh, a clamper. And it's probably going to be used as a coffee table until this all gets resolved and we can get up there and dedicate a monument. But well, we did dedicate the site. We still got the plaque. I'm sure you remember Scott Pinkerton. Some of you. Uh, dedicated 1997, the Mount Ophir Mines. This is out in Mount Ophir. Scott wrote a letter to uh, the editor, and he said. That Clamper monument, and he misspelled Clampers on purpose, is so incorrect. You got the wrong president for the era in there. You've got just too many inaccuracies. The only thing correct on that plaque are the periods and the commas. And he was right. And they say, how did this happen? That was before Skip. <laughs> I joined the Clampers in 98. Uh, researching some other plaques, I, I saw we had this bad press. That, that plaque had also been vandalized, but uh, there was no motto for mines. There was only one mine. Uh, we corrected the words in 2012, and I think uh, Scott figured when he's looking down at it now, is a happy man. There are some, some monuments we dedicate twice, we rededicate them. Uh, Bear Valley, across from the Bear Valley store. It was originally dedicated in 1985, but it didn't have all this around it. It was just basically this and this base. And uh, in 1998, when I was initiated, that's where I went in. And, uh, we rededicated that. So the same monument, the same plaque, two different dedications. If you go around the back, it'll say rededicated 1999, 97. And uh, Dara School is not Dara School, it's Mount Buckingham School. But we maintain our, we maintain our monuments but we don't shovel snow. <laughs> Indian Gulch. Indian Gulch was a small community, had no name, it was going to be, they wanted to be called Santa Cruz because there's Santa Cruz Mountain there. Well, there was already a Santa Cruz post office, so they had to come up with something else. They came up with Indian Gulch. When that was dedicated, George Gordo, I don't know if you remember George, some of you do, uh, lives out in Kathy's Valley. He said, besides putting this plaque up, let's take the cemetery on as an annual project. And every spring the clampers go out, we weed whack, repair fallen over, knocked over headstones, paint the gate, whatever. We just go out there on a Saturday morning, not a lot of publicity, you'll never see us. Uh, 
Father Steve has been out there on occasion, and he's blessed the Budweiser. <laughs> <laughs> Fremont Sport up into Vista Point. Uh, Tom will tell you there was never a fort there. I agree. It was part of the 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 siege with Fremont and the Reset Mining Company. Was that going to be rededicated? Uh, you know, you talk about, always look at the back of it. If we redid anything, we would put a urinal behind that one. <laughs> <laughs> More people have interest on what's behind that Fremont's one. <laughs> the Mint, that's uh, across from uh, the old Yosemite Garage on Main Street in uh, Coulterville, which is down the VFW. California State Mineral and Mining Museum was about to be closed. This plaque is outside the door as you go in. When they were there packing up all the specimens and this to, to take off to safe storage so nobody could see them, uh, we went down there and basically told them, uh, you guys may have what's inside and pack it and take it to Sacramento, but the plaque stays in Mariposa County. And of course they go, well, we're not sure about that. We'll have to check with Sacramento. And we basically said, you want to take it now or take it later? <laughs> Schlager Hotel. It, yeah. Built in 1859. It goes down here. Uh, Presidents Grant and Garfield stayed here. Don't believe that. <laughs> they may have both stayed there, but President Garfield, as president, never stayed there. When he was inaugurated president, inaugurations happened in March. He was shot in July. He laid in basically a coma until he passed in September. So he was one of the few presidents that never gave a State of the Union address. But he could have stayed at the Schlager Hotel because he was shot in the train station in Washington, D.C. He had probably just gotten off the train from a ride, you know, from the Schlager Hotel a couple nights before. So it's possible, but very doubtful. Sun Sun Wu. That, uh, that adobe building is a one-story adobe. Even though it has a basement, it's only a one-story adobe. And in fact, there's uh, artifacts in there from when the Chinese just moved out of there. They just left a lot of it. It almost looked like a crack house, I guess, from what I've heard. But it's a one-story adobe building. Don't be confused by the basement. Bridgeport. This is uh, on Old Highway, just beyond Yaki Gulch. Uh, the Clampers were actually given an easement, a dedicated easement for that site by the property owner. That was 1987. The Old Stone Jail. The Stone Jail, or Granite Jail, uh, had a wooden plaque that was put on in 1979 by the humbug Al Hothschild. Okay? That wooden plaque was taken off and a granite plaque was put on by his son who was a humbug in 1995. Well, that wooden plaque stayed in the, uh, the jail, kind of under the stairwell just there. And I talked to Sheriff Jim Allen. I said, Jim, I said, that, that shouldn't just be, it's going to walk away. You know? He said, well, okay, it's a plaque for plaque, you can have it. <laughs> so I got it, and right now it's in this museum. It's stored here in a little niche right over there. Thanks to the museum, they've been gracious enough for us to have a little space, space to display things like old plaques and documents. 
Jeffrey Hotel. Uh, I told you earlier that Coulterville had been devastated by fires every 10 years, three times. That's what the Coulterville Hotel originally looked like in 1870. And as you see it now, that's what it looks like when it was rebuilt in 1909. Tunnel View in Yosemite, James Savage chapter, 1852. They came into our territory and put up a plaque. Well, we didn't really care. But the National Park Service did. They didn't want to have anything that gives information about Yosemite that's not been blessed by the National Park Service. So they took it down. And where it is, I have no idea, but uh, there's a lot of retired people here in Mariposa that have worked in the park. They remember when these, they went through and took down several plaques. They remember when they were taken down, but don't know where they went. <coughs> Bernita's Jail. 1954, for the centennial of uh, the courthouse, the Clampers came and dedicated the, uh, the Hornios Calabooses. Uh, welcome to the brethren, uh, welcome, whoa. Welcome. Do you remember the Hornios oh, Calabooses? Yeah. Welcome to the 1854 brethren. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Quido, quido, sir. Anyway, uh, 1954, uh, the Clampers came out, they're very active in the centennial for the courthouse. After 1954, or about 1954, Francisco Salazar acquired the jail and had a museum there until at least 1962. Because, thanks again to Tom, right here, you can see there was another plaque. And it was a plaque in memory of Francisco Salazar's mother. And she died in 1962. So he had it from 1954 to at least 62, 63. Uh, and this really bothers me because this whole picture, because the county's not doing anything to preserve any history. You know, it's there. And if it falls down, probably it's what's going to happen. Uh, it's embarrassing to say that that's, that's one of our, our most precious pieces of history, and we're not doing anything with it. Nobody knows who's got the key. Nobody knows how to get in. It's just there. Now I'm going to tell you about Moffat's men. Out of Mount Ofer. There was a gentleman named John Moffat. He came from San Francisco where he had an assay office. 1936, the Clampers came up here. And June 17, 1936, Mariposa Gazette. Mount Ophir Mint will be marked by E. Clampus Fidus. One of the most important undertakings of E. Clampus Fidus organization while on their trek to Mariposa County, will be the placing of an appropriate marker on the historic Old Mint in Mount Ophir. The plate is now being prepared in San Francisco and will be brought to Mariposa and placed in appropriate seven ceremonies by the organization. The wording on the plaque will read Mount Ophir, Mariposa County, operated under authority of Congress, 1851. California's first mint where the $50 gold octagonal coins were minted. The ruins of the mint are standing and may someday be restored and the grounds taken over by California as a state park. That's the story of Moffitt's Mint, 1936. Moffitt's Mint. It never happened. That plaque that they talked about in 19... 
36 coming up here, be made in San Francisco, going to be placed on the building? Huh? Dave, stand up. Stand up. Yeah, I know. Okay, come on, John. Dave? Okay. Turn around and face the music. <laughs> show up. I got a got an email from Dave Trabuca, and he says, "What do you know about Moffat's Mint?" And I had the basic clamper party line that in 1936 we plaqued it, and I thought maybe when they realigned Mountover Road, the plaque got destroyed or whatever. Dave. Says, come on over, I want to show you something. Tell them how you got that, Dave. Okay. My grandfather's brother is Frank Trabuco from Mount William. And Frank's grandson, Jerry Westfall, he's 80 years old. Uh, we were down in the grand visiting, and he brought out this plaque. He said, I think you should have this. You're a clamper. I don't really know any other clampers. I'm looking at it. I said, what do you think? And he said, it was in my grandfather's store in Mount William, up on the shelf. In those days, the mail delivered at the store, and you went in, and you just grabbed your mail out of the pigeonhole. Well, the plaque was delivered. Nobody ever picked it up. <clears throat> when they shut the store down sometime in the 50s, Jerry, they found the plaque, and it was at his house. So when he gave it to me, I immediately got hold of Skip. Skip tried to sell it, I don't know, somewhere. Scrap it up. <laughs> <laughs> but you can see in the back, it's never been placed. Yeah. But uh, from, thank you, Dave. Okay. From uh, 1936, when they were going to put it up, it got mailed or freighted, Railway Express, Federal Express, UPS, whoever did it then. It, uh, it came up and it sat for 76 years in basically the dead letter office in Bear Valley. So there was never a mint and there was never a plaque placed. In June, this is going to go into our little niche here where I have a little ceremony and it'll stay here. But I'm not going to have that happen until June because the Clampers have Grand Council. It's their annual meeting in Sonora. And I want to show it to the guys from San Francisco that sent it up here and never followed through. <laughs> so, thank you. Our little niche is over there. I'd like to thank Tom. Tom got me to put this together. Tom is, like I said, he's my spell checker. <laughs> He's a real asset to the community and to uh, the museum. So, have some refreshments and buy some books. Oh. Yeah, is there a compilation somewhere written down of all of the plaques put up by any society that you just No. Why not? Why didn't you do one? I'm sorry. Okay, let's get together. No, uh, I just started this when Tom said, hey, would you speak to the uh, museum? This is about a month ago. There are a lot of uh, monuments and plaques around. There's, there's one uh, dedicated to the Friends of the Library by the Masons down in the little grass area behind the library. There's one to somebody over by the uh, South Hawkeye <coughs> in the garden, in the planter there. Yeah. I just want to keep what I'm doing to historical sites. Could, can I tell them two quick stories? No, but try. I'll tell them. <laughs> <laughs> First time I ever met Skip, I was in Bear Valley at the house. I mowing the lawn, absolutely exhausted. I just flaked out on the lawn. <laughs> Been out there about five minutes snoozing and all of a sudden, are you okay? Are you okay? It was Skip, he was doing the bugger baking thing. Thought I died out there. <laughs> and the other story is at the Winter's Ball. 
you know I'm going to say this. Sure. The Winter Ball in Sonora in December, they have a really nice dance, and, you know. Well, Sean and I got ready to leave at about 11 o'clock, and I'd left the dome light on in the car, and the battery was dead. No problem. Skip takes Shal back in, having drinks, and dancing, I'm out there, and it's cold. Sheriff show up, tow truck shows up, Skip comes out. Shal, Skip's standing there, he's got a drink in his hand. Physical clamors. Sheriff looks down and he goes, that's not a drink in your hand, is it? He goes, no, no. Pours it all over me. <laughs> Dave wears whiskey well. Uh, one other thing about this Moffat's mint, was there ever a mint, whatever? Back in the, in the vault back here, I found two letters. And one is from the General Services Administration, dated 1960, written to Ruth Bassey. You know Ruth Bassey? It was written to her. She was doing some inquiry. Last paragraph says, an examination of the records of the former general land office that are now in the National Archives, including the records of the former Board of Land Commissioners for California, has not revealed any mention of a private mint at Mount Ofer, California. That's from the General Services. And what could be better than that? Something from Treasury Department, Director of the Mint. This is to inform you that a search of available records discloses no information about a mint at Mount So, you know the little octagonal gold things they talk about? These things, little medallions now? There was a a $50 gold piece minted in San Francisco, minted under contract by Moffat and Company in San Francisco, 1851. In September of last year, one of these real 50, 1851 gold pieces sold at auction for $460,000. Wow. Wow. So, yeah, so they came from San Francisco. <laughs> Well, thank you for that wonderful.